Whoever crafts the worlds for the Final Fantasy games is clearly well read when it comes to world religion. The lore in each Final Fantasy game is a sophisticated amalgamation of our real-world myths, ranging from staples like Christianity and Islam to ancient cults like Paganism and the Gnostics. I'll give a couple of examples for those of you who haven't watched my first Final Fantasy lore video, where I discuss the same thing. In regards to Final Fantasy X, it seems like the character of Sin is a clear reference to the Gnostic concept of the Demiurge. Also, the function of the Pyreflies seems very similar to the function of another Gnostic concept known as the Pleroma. If you wish to learn more about that, look in the description box below for a link that will take you to my Final Fantasy X video. Anyways, I wish to continue my analysis of Final Fantasy's inspirations by doing one on Final Fantasy IX, the second Final Fantasy game I have ever finished. But before I do, I want to let all of you know that I am about to finish Final Fantasy VII for the first time. Naturally, I will investigate that game's inspirations when I complete it, but I need your help. If you have noticed religious influences in regards to that game, please let me know what they are in the comment section below. Doing that will help me make the most complete and enlightening video possible. With that out of the way, let me show you just how much thought and care went into the construction of Final Fantasy IX's lore and world. There are multiple examples I could focus on, but for the sake of time and clarity, I can get my point across by focusing on one example, the land of Memoria. First of all, Memoria exists for a similar reason that Xanarkand, quote unquote, exists in Final Fantasy X. Both lands are physical manifestations of the mind, with a couple of small differences. Where Xanarkand was created by the dreams of the Faith, Memoria was created by the memories of the inhabitants of Gaia, two distinct concepts which originate from the same source. Unlike Memoria, Xanarkand seems to be a solitary dimension, a recreation of the Xanarkand that was destroyed centuries prior. Memoria doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason to its architecture. I mean, sure, there are recreations of people's memories in Memoria, but those memories are like random flowers sprouting out of a sea of grass. It makes sense that Memoria would take on such a chaotic form, because Memoria is, like I said before, the physical manifestation of all the minds of Gaia. The <laughs> collective unconscious of Gaia, if you will. The unconscious mind has no discernible structure, but we know it contains things, like dreams and memories. If the unconscious mind were to take physical form, it would be as chaotic and random as Memoria is. I also think it's appropriate that a place like Memoria resides next to the Primordial Crystal, the place that Kuja refers to as the quote-unquote source of all things. Just like the unconscious mind, the crystal contains everything within it. Both the unconscious mind and the crystal birthed everything, and we return to unconsciousness, to that origin point, upon death. In the case of Final Fantasy IX, it seems like our heroes are traversing the path the soul takes upon death, the physical form of it, that is. When they see the various memories popping up in Memoria, this would be a lot like what the soul supposedly sees upon death. You ever hear about somebody's life flashing before their eyes when they die? The same concept applies here. That flashing only stops when you reach the very end, the source. Now, let's address the proof that exists regarding my perspective on the crystal, and Memoria's similarities to the unconscious mind. In this case, the proof lies with the monsters that we fight in Memoria. Let's start with the monster known as Ash. I have no idea why this monster is known as Ash, because it is clearly the pagan slash Gnostic deity known as Baphomet. Several other creatures in the Final Fantasy games are given the same names as creatures from real-world mythology. So why not this one? Anyways, I bring up Baphomet because this deity was an attempt at describing the nature of the infinite. To quote Eliphas Levi, it is a pantheistic and magical figure of the Absolute. Note the random amalgamations of opposite elements on Baphomet's body. It is part animal and part human. It is part male and female. It points up and it points down. 
The creation of a deity like Baphomet was an attempt to describe the nature of something like the unconscious mind, or an origin point like the crystal in Final Fantasy IX. If you were to try and personify the Absolute to give form to infinity in a solitary creature, then you might get something like Baphomet. But of course, Baphomet was just one attempt at describing the infinite, and the combination of opposite elements that is inherent to the infinite. Various other religions have tried to do the same thing. Let's look at another monster one can find in Memoria, the Chimera. In Greek mythology, a chimera is a fire-breathing female monster with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail. For many of the Final Fantasy games preceding IX, we see basically a direct adaptation of this concept. It's only when we get to Final Fantasy VI, apparently, that the chimera starts adding different elements to its overall form. When we get to Nine, it is no longer a combination of a lion, goat, and serpent. It's a goat, serpent, dragon, and whatever the heck that is. Believe it or not though, this changing in form is consistent with the nature of a chimera. Let's ignore the mythological origin of the word chimera for a moment, and look at the technical, biological definition of a chimera. A chimera is any combination of genetically different tissues. In other words, it is an amalgamation of opposites, just like Baphomet is. There are also the four Chaos Guardians, Malaris, Lyke, or Lick, Kraken, and Tiamat. All these characters seem to bear some sort of link to the nature of the infinite slash unconscious. Malaris, for example, is another type of chimera, with a serpentine lower half and a multi-armed upper half. The Kraken, for obvious reasons, has ties to the sea. The sea is the most commonly used symbol for the unconscious, because it represents an indiscernible darkness that nonetheless contains many forms within. Most importantly, however, is the creature known as Tiamat. Tiamat is a primordial goddess from ancient Mesopotamia, a giant sea monster of sorts. Interestingly, Tiamat in Final Fantasy IX is not associated with the element of water. That responsibility went to the Kraken. Instead, Tiamat is associated with wind. I have a theory as to why that might be, but for the moment, I'll just focus on Tiamat in regards to her real-life origins. In the Babylonian creation story, the Enuma Elish, Tiamat engages in battle with the storm god known as Marduk. This battle takes place at the beginning of time, before the world is created. In order to create the world, Marduk took the body of Tiamat after he killed her and split it. Tiamat's ribs became the vault of heaven and earth. Her tail became the Milky Way. Another way of understanding this is that Tiamat contained the whole universe within her, much like the crystal or the unconscious. So, let's recap. Ash, otherwise known as Baphomet, is a depiction of the infinite and all the opposites contained within. The Chimera, while maybe not directly referencing the infinite, bears its quality because it too is a union of opposites. Tiamat contained the universe within her, with all its opposites, and it was brought forward when Marduk sliced her open. The fact that these three monsters reside so close to the origin of all things cannot be coincidental. It demonstrates a very sophisticated understanding of real-world mythology. Bringing these creatures from different cultures together based on their shared qualities is not only a lovely tribute to the history of human imagination, but also to the cross-cultural patterns that can be found within. But granted, there's still the issue of time at being a wind creature in the game rather than a sea creature in the Mesopotamian canon. I resolved this conflict by pointing to Tiamat's other mythological representation, that of a dragon. A dragon, obviously, has wings, and is thus associated with the element of wind. But there's more to it than that. Those serpents have been used in various religions to personify primordial chaos, dragons have also shared the same purpose. They are both fearsome creatures that reside in the darkness, within the fearsome chaos, and will attack you if you're not careful. 
One symbol that I have discussed frequently on this channel is the Ouroboros, a symbol that features either a serpent or dragon eating its own tail. This represents the union of life and death, a union of opposites that we also see in the three previously mentioned creatures. This union of life and death reflects the nature of the universe before it came into being. Before things like life and death existed, it was all unified in a paradoxical state, just like the crystal, just like the unconscious. It is only when that seed of life is split open, like how Marduk split open time at, that the universe could be born. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you liked it. See, when you hit the like button, it tells the YouTube algorithm that not only this video, but all the other content on my channel is worth watching. By the way, a bunch of my regular viewers have been telling me that my videos haven't been showing up in their subscription boxes. I confirmed this by posting about some discrepancies regarding my view count on my community page. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of my new content, make sure to hit that bell icon right next to the subscribe button. You'll want to stay tuned for this coming week especially, because there'll be some mind-blowing content regarding Psychonauts. That wasn't meant to be a pun, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> also, there'll be discussion about a little blue hedgehog that you might have heard of. Until then, though, just remember, as always, stay yellow.